I want to show you the picture of me and my wife here. Uh, it's hard for you to see. Now, in all my cell phones and my wallet, yeah, I know. It's hard to see. I just say, like my wallet. I'm just saying that. Uh, this picture again. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, the husband and wife is really the most important person in our life. If we treasure the person, our life will be blessed. But if we just step down and the person hurt the person, we and our life and our ministry will be destroyed. That's why Paul said, love husbands, love your wife as you love your body. Because when you love your wife, then you're loving your body, loving yourself. But if we hurt our wife or husband, then we're hurting ourselves. I have to been to many countries and everywhere I went I tried to find out the married marriage situation of the people, even of the pastors. I find I found that it's most places the marriage is difficult. That is one area Satan was able to attack the church. And it's mostly because the husband doesn't treasure the wife and doesn't understand the nature of a woman. And a woman doesn't understand the nature of a man. And everyone wants to get something from the marriage. Now, if you hear someone talk about his or her dates, they will always say like this. Oh, he or she is handsome or beautiful. He or she has a lot of money. He or she is very good to me. It's everything I want. Now, from this conversation, it shows from the marriage or the friendship, they're thinking of what I can get. Seldom would people say, I want to bless the person. Or, or even before marriage, they won't say to the person. I treasure you. I want to do good things to you. I want to build a good relationship with you. People always say, What I can get from you. And they don't talk about what I can give. And then when there is something wrong, they always say, you didn't, you didn't, uh, uh, you didn't do the you didn't listen to me, you didn't talk to me, you don't love me, it's always blaming the other person. Seldom would people say, I have failed in what I should do. Please forgive me. 
I'm sorry that I have hurt you. Please forgive me. Now let me ask you, is it true that most people they expect something from the spouse? Je, ni ukweli ya kwamba watu wanapoingia kwenye uchumbiano ama kwenye ndoa huwa wanaingia na matarajio and they don't want to give to the marriage. Huwa hawataki kupeana kwa ndoa yao. Now that is human nature. Hiyo ni halisia ya ubinadamu. The human nature is to get something. Ubinadamu ni ule wa kujitakia and not to give na si wa kupeana. That is basically selfishness. Na hiyo ndiyo uchoe ya mwanadamu. Let me ask you. Wacha ni kuulizi. Are we selfish? Je, sisi ni wachoyo? We just want to get something from the marriage. Chaka tu kupata kitu katika kila hali tunayengia hata iwe ya ndoa. We want to get something from the other person. Tunataka mpaka tupata kitu kutoka kwa mtu. We're not willing to give if that person sees it. Let me ask you, is it true? Is it true? Is it true? So we need to repent. And say if you want a good marriage, a good relationship, we should think of giving. We should think what we can put in. So we understand that. It's a human nature of selfishness. Then we have to overcome. We need to learn to love. That's why the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then love people as ourselves. And the hardest person to love is who? It's the spouse. Why is it hardest? Because we see the spouse every day. And then the spouse can see who we are. And then in this relationship, you always want to get something. <laughs> and then, when the spouse is with us all the time, and then they see our weaknesses. Because in the home is where we show whether we have love or not. Many people will say, it's my husband's fault, my wife's fault. It's always the same thing. My husband doesn't listen to me. My husband, husband doesn't care for me. Or my wife is nagging too much. Is talking too much. It's the same thing over and over again. Now, for my wife, why doesn't she nag a lot? Because whenever she has anything unhappy, I will always listen to her. I will always respond to her. That I will not skip anything she talk about. I respect what she feels. Because she is the most important person in my life. Do you agree? Your husband and wife is the most important person in your life. Now, of course, God is most important. But on earth, among the people, who is the most important? It's the husband or the wife. It's the most important man. So we need to understand this and know that most marriage problem is because of lack of love 
for the young person. Tuelewe ya kwamba shida zinazokumba ndoa ni kutokana na kutokuwa na upendo wa kila mmoja. So I asked her, the Lord will help those who are married here. Na uulize ya kwamba Mungu asaidie wale ambao wako hapa na wameoa. Then you love your spouse. Mweze kupenda wake zenu. Try to resolve any problem. Mweze kutatua shida zenu. Admit our faults. Na mweze uweze kutatua makosa yenu. And ask for forgiveness. Na mweze kuombana msamaha. And be nice to the person. Na mweze kushirikiana kushikamana. And ask him or her. Ask him or her. Na mwambe yeye. How can I love you more? Umulize naeza hadi kukupenda zaidi. Now let me tell you five, the language of love, the five ways we show love. Write this down. Wata ni kuambia njiatano za kuwanyesha upendo. The five ways we show love. Njiatano za kuwanyesha upendo. Number one is spending time, concentrated time with the other person. Njia kwanza ni kuchukua mda unaotosha kukiwa karibu na yule unaempenda. Giving time to the person. And not looking at a cell phone all the time while talking. But give, you know, attended time to the person. Do you find, have you found your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend when they talk to you they will be looking at a cell phone so to give this attention to have time every day to give to the person okay that's the first way to show love and the second way say encouraging words loving words Sema maisha ya maneno ya kuimizana, maneno ya kutia moyo. Mwambie mwenzako maneno ya kutia moyo. Words that show, show love and care. Maneno ya naeonyesha kujali na kupenda. And number three. Na ila tatu. Serving the other person. Helping the other person in some way that will do something. Kuweza kumjali, kumudumia. And then number four. Gifts of love. E, zawadi. Zawadi za upendo. Now gifts of love doesn't have to be expensive. Zawadi haimanishi yue kitu kikubwa sana. Ja damana sana. If you find something good, it could be something very small, and you 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 buy it, and then you bring it to your wife and say, I want to bring this to you and say I love you. Zawadi unaeza nunua kitu chochote hata kidogo, lakini idamana ya ile upendo ulio nao, ndi unaleta unamambia mchumba hapa kamba. So today I encourage when you go home, get something and give to your wife or husband. And then number five, body contact. Now this is for husband and wife to have intimate body contact with friends in the church kwa marafiki walioko kanisani we can shake hands tunaweza salamiana or tunaweza the shoulder tunaweza shukuriana kushikana kwa mkono and hugging sometimes wakati mwingine ku kumbatiana hugging can be tempting to many males kumbatiana inaweza kuwa hatari kwa wanaume wengine now when a, when a woman hug a man the woman can think of just showing friendliness. But the man might have sexual thoughts. So be aware of that. Okay. So these are five ways that we show love. Including to the spouse and to the friends and family members. Okay. Now we go to the next point now. It's the next totally next point. This point is about how to find the person God has planned for us. Because God is a wonderful plan in our life. Kwa sababu Mungu ndiye mwanzilishi na mpangiliaji ratiba za maisha yetu. If God has a wonderful plan that would include our spouse. 
Mungu akiwa na mipango mizuri kuhusu maisha yetu basi hiyo mipango pia wachumba wetu wako ndani kwa mipango hizo God's plans includes how he wants to bless us mipango za Mungu ziko ndani na jinsi anavyohitaji kutubariki how he wants to give us strength jinsi anataka kututia nguvu how he arranges the way of our life our direction of our life jinsi amepanga kuelekezwa kwa maisha yetu na jinsi tunavyokuwa kimaisha what we will do in the future yale tutakayofanya kwa maisha yetu ya alafu how we can serve god and bless people vile tunaweza fanya kazi ya Mungu na kuwabariki watu certainly he knows you accomplish all these things Mungu anatuwezesha kutimiza haya mambo yote There is one person very important Yeye yeah, kuna mtu ambaye ni muhimu mpaka Mungu atakongezea That is your spouse Na huyo right? ni mchumba wako Do you agree that that's yeah. very important Je unakubaliana na mimi ya kwamba mchumba ni mtu wa muhimu yes. Have you heard of people who was who suffer in a marriage Je umewahi sikia na kwa watu wale ambao wameteseka kwenye ndoa Have you heard of people like that Umewahi sikia watu kama hao They, they want to serve God. Wanataka kumtumikia Mungu. But their husband or wife doesn't like it. Lakini mtu either mke wake ama mume wake hataki. And a husband or wife stop them. Na wao mke wake au mume wake anakuwa ni kigwazo kwa yeye kwa huduma ya Mungu. And give them all kinds of negative pressure. Na wanaanza kuwapea mambo ya kuwalazimisha na kuwashusha moyo. Have you heard of Maiski ama mke wake? So if the person married the wrong person what happens? Mtu akimwelekea mtu ambaye si yule aliyekubaliana na Mungu nini inatendeka? What will happen? Nini inatendeka ikiwa mtu anaoleka kwa mtu mbaya? The plan of God it will be hard to come true, right? Mipango za Mungu hazitajimia kwa maisha yao. Oh, for the picture you can stand up at its very angle. I'm sorry. Thank you. Just take the picture of standing up. It's better. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, let's go on. So God's plan would include our spouse. Mipango za Mungu zinajumlisha wachumba wetu. Okay, Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17. Samuel 38:8. Samuel mia Psalms Zaburi. Zaburi 139:16. 16 hadi 17. Nana alikuwa na Biblia ya Kiswahili. Okay. Biblia ya Kiswahili. Okay, someone give me. Oh. Okay, I'll read in English here. All the days. Anasoma kwa Kiswahili. Now I'll read from the middle of verse 16. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Zaburi 139:16 inasema hivi Macho yako yaliniona kabla sijakamilika chuoni mwako ziliandikiwa zote pia siku zilizoamriwa kabla hazijawa bado Mungu Mungu fikira zako zina dhamani nyingi kwangu jinsi ilivyo kubwa jumla yake Okay let me ask you what are you doing have you seen god work in your life je umeona mungu akitenda kazi maishani mwako that he planned for you to be saved akapanga wewe uwe uokoke and attract you to come to the church na aweze kukuvutia uje kanisani and arrange for you how you can grow in the lord na apange jinsi ambavyo wewe utaweza kuwa katika roho na mambo ya mungu and when you face difficulties God plan for ways to solve your problem. Na unapojikumba kumbana na mambo magumu Mungu anapeana suluhu kwa mambo haya. Or give you strength ana au akupe nguvu. Have you noticed God has done works in your life? Je, umewahi gundua kwamba Mungu anaratiba zile amepanga panga kwa maisha yako? And then when you look back in your life you can see God's plan. Na ukitizama maisha yako ambayo umeishi unagundua kwamba kuna mipango Mungu amekupitisha ndani na amekuwezesha. If you see that would you raise your hand? If you Je, see kama umeiona haya hebu ni God's work. Kama umeiona kazi ya Mungu maisha yako ni hebu ni mkono. How he planned for your life? Would you raise your hand? Kama maisha yako anapanga vitu zako. Now amen. I hope all of you will see that one day. Nina 
tumaini na ninaomba ya kwamba kila mmoja wetu siku moja aweze kutambua na kuona hayo maisha ni mwapi. You know a long time before I went overseas to different countries kabla nianze kutembea mataifa tofauti tofauti people already prophesy over me watu walikuwa washaanza kuninenea unabii and one of them was a one of my church member mmoja wao alikuwa mshiriki wa kanisa letu kule nyumbani at that time i had to leave hong kong uh, and you know i i really did not want to I, well, I had to leave Hong Kong because my first wife could not adjust to the wakati, life in Hong Kong. Wakati huo nililazimika kutoka Hong Kong kwa sababu maisha ya kule eh, mke wangu hanga ilianza kuyastahimili. Now let me tell you my first wife have her wife has passed away. Wacha niwaambie ya kwamba mke wangu wa kwanza ambaye hanga ilisahimili maisha ya Hong Kong aliaga. When I was with her I I wanted to come to Hong Kong and go to different places to do if wakati nilikuwa nishi word nilikuwa natamani niende Hong Kong niweze kutembea nifanye huduma ya Mungu but she could not accept that lakini hanga ilikubali and she did not feel comfortable with that lakini hakusikia kama ni biema and then one of my church member prayed for me mmoja wa ekalu wa kanisa letu akaniombea and then he said pastor akaniambia mtungaji one day we you will come back siku moja utarudi not only will you come back sio tu eti utarudi you will go to different countries in the world utatoka na utembee kwa mataifa tofauti ulimwenguni at that time i thought that was impossible na wakati huo mimi si kufikiria ingelezekana but it did come true lakini ilikuja kutimia another prophet said to me na huo mwingine nabii mwingine akanipea unabii huo i went to a meeting of a prophet nilienda mkutano wa nabii fulani he just pointed me and say come out akani nionye akani nionyesha nionyesha kidole akaniambia nisongee and then he prophesied over me akaniambia unabii huo one day you go to different countries siku moja utatembea nje tofauti tofauti to do mission work ukifanya huduma wa Mungu now god already has the plan mungu ana hizo mipango za maisha yako so before it came true kabla itimie god already planned that mungu alikuwa amepanga that's why these people could receive this message na ndio maana hao watu walikuwa wanapokea unabii huu kunihusu when i look back at my wife life ninapotazama maisha yangu ya hapo awali i can see god's plan in all this ninagundua ya kwamba kulikuwa na mipangilio ya mungu now let me ask you can you believe that God has a plan for your future for Je, your whole life. Unaweza amini ya kwamba Mungu ana mipango ya mipango ya maisha yako ya halafu? According to this verse it says that all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. Yes, katika msari huu yasema kwamba yale mambo yanayotendeka kwa maisha yangu yalikuwa yamepangwa hapo awali kabla yaje kutendeka. So all the days of our life were already written in heaven in God's book. Maisha yetu yalishaandikwa katika kitabu cha Mungu jinsi ratiba imeshapangwa. And what did he write? Yeye aliandika nini? There it says how precious to me are your thoughts God how vast is the sum of them. Jinsi ilivyo vyema mawazo yako na ilivyo makuu kwa maisha yangu. That means what God wrote there were very precious thoughts. Hiyo inamaanisha kwamba yale Mungu aliandika pale yalikuwa mawazo yenye dhamana kutuhusu. And they were large in number. Yalikuwa makuu katika idadi. So God has written many many good thoughts for each one of us. Kwa Mungu ameandika mawazo mazuri sana kwa kila mmoja wetu. But I want to tell you that lakini nataka nikwambie kuwa this plan of God will not come true automatically. Hizi mipango za Mungu hazitimii tu. In Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2. Wa Roma wa Romi 12 mmoja hadi mbili. There it says that dedicate your body, your body as a living sacrifice to God. Biblia inasema kwamba peana mwili wako kama dhabihu iliyo hai. That's Romans 12:1 to 2. So Paul said, Paulo anasema, dedicate offer your body as a living sacrifice to God. Do not be conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Ila ubadilike na uweze kujibadilisha mawazo yako. So you will can discern the good and perfect pleasing will of God. Ili uweze kuwa na maono ya njia zilizo njema zinazomfurahisha Bwana. 
This plan is written in heaven. It's very clear. But not everyone entered the plan. Not because God doesn't love you. But because people don't follow God. Have you seen people go to church? And they sin a lot. And they don't obey God. And they don't pray. Will they enter God's plan? Will they? No. So this plan is written in heaven. One day you go to heaven. And you see God's plan. And you say, how come I did not enter the plan? And then God will say to you, because you did not dedicate your body to the living you did not dedicate your body as a living sacrifice. And you follow the world. And your mind was not renewed. So you suffer. So there is a lot of pain in your life. And many people will be disappointed. I could have been a great person. But I wasted it by sinning. Now, look at me. God has a plan for me. God has given me many good teachings. I thank God for that. God has also given me the strong presence of God. I thank God for that. God has provided for me so I can go to different countries. But if one day I sin and destroy God's plan and then all this mission work can be stopped. Do you want to see that happen? That all the plans of God in my life is destroyed? Do you want to see that? Do you want to see that? No. And so I want to keep my life. I keep my life holy and loving. Full of the love of God. Rejoicing in the Lord. Enjoying the presence of God. And loving people. And care about people. That's how I follow God's plan. And God has blessed my life in every area. Do you want to be blessed in your life? Or do you want to go one day to heaven and then you say, Wow, God has a wonderful plan, I just wasted it. Or do you want to go one day to do you believe God's plan is the best for your life? Do you believe? Yes. How many believe that God's plan is the best? Very good. Now put down your hands. Are you willing to pay the price to enter this plan? That means you do not have premarital sex. Do not commit adultery. Do not just chase after the beautiful girl. Or the handsome guys. And wait for God's plan. And obey God. And love God. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to pay the price? How many are willing to pay the price and say, I don't want to commit adultery or premarital sin? Do you want to pay the price? 
I want to spend time loving God and serving God and blessing people. If you want this perfect plan of God, please raise your hand. If you want to follow God's plan and pay the price, keep your hands up, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Now I hope you really follow that. Let me tell you, I have taught many people and many youths I told them about God's wonderful plan including your spouse or no, no spouse, no marriage because God hasn't planned marriage for everyone for some people it's marriage some people it's no marriage but it doesn't matter you won't die from it but I know in this country there is pressure from the society and from your family that you have to get married is there such a pressure? and the Bible says do not be yoked with the unbeliever that means do not marry a non a non Christian. Or do not marry a person says he's a Christian but he doesn't go to church. Are you willing to follow God's plan? Now, I know in this society there's a lot of pressure. I talked to Washington and he told me that. If a person is not married, the person is despised, looked down upon by the society. People will laugh at them. But let me ask you, what are you using? It's God's plan more important or people's eyes more important? Let's see them. Okay, let's see them. Let's see them. Okay, so you say that it's God's plan that's most important. Now, can you believe that God has planned for you a person? written in the book of life if you follow God and obey God that person will not run away no person can take that person away when you follow God, that person will be moved by God to come to you. And you will be moved by God to come to the person. You don't have to chase after the person. Can you believe this? If someone is planned by God, God already planned that person. If you obey God, can that person run away? No. No, right? Yeah. But many people don't believe that. Let me tell you, I have told many Jews and married people what Don't chase after girls that are beautiful. Don't look for guys that are handsome and rich. Do not let romance guide your marriage. Now what does that mean? People let romance guide their marriage. What do and when they see someone they like, there's electricity. Nice. 
I like that person. Napenda huyo mtu, napenda huyo mwingine. And when the person talks to me, na mtu akiniongelesha mimi, my heart pounds. Moyo wangu unaanza kudunda. Whoa, I like that person. Oh, napenda huyo mtu. And people follow this feeling. Watu wanafuata hizi hisia. And very often they just have premarital sex. Na kwa karibu wanajikuta katika ngono ambazo si kwenye ndoa. They just follow their impulse that wanafuata tamaniyo ya mioyo zao na hisia. They follow the sex drive. Wanafuata tamaa za kimwili. And then what happened is they nail for tia. They ruined God's plan for them. Wanaua mipangilio ya Mungu kwa maisha yao. Now let me ask you, do you trust God? Jeo nakuuliza unamwamini Mungu? Do you believe in God's journey? Unaamini mipango za Mungu? Do you believe in God's blessings? Je, unaamini katika baraka za Mungu? Now if you do, you can enter God's plan. Ukifanya hivyo utaingia kwenye mipango za Mungu. If you don't, na usipofuatilia, you won't be able to enter God's plan. Hautakuwa unaweza ingia kwenye mipango za Mungu. So many people just look at a, you know, see someone Handsome or beautiful, mtu anaweza ona mtu ni wakupendeza ama ni mrembo. They are attracted by impulse. Na wanaanza kusukuma na hisia za mwili. Let me tell you. Wacha niwaambie. For Christians, how should we go about finding God's plan for us? Wakristo tunaweza tembea haja kutambua mipango za Mungu kwa maisha yetu. When we see someone that we are attracted to, tukiona mtu ambaye anatuvutia, we should pray to God. Tunamuomba Mungu. God is this person. Mungu huyu ndiye mtu. If this is the person, na huyu ndiye mtu, kama ni yeye, please guide me. Mungu nielekeze. So I will, you know, I will be guided by you and the person will be guided by you. Kwa hivyo nitaweza ongoza na wewe, Mungu na yeye pia ongoze na wewe. And God can make it happen. Na Mungu anaweza tena haya yakapata. Oh Lord, please guide me. Na unasema Mungu niongoze. Instead of using human methods. Badala ya kutumia njia za kibinadamu tu. People even Christians use human methods. Watu hata wa Kristo wanatumia njia zao za kiujanja. And that's why how Satan destroy their lives. Na hivyo ndivyo shetani huharibu maisha yao. Let me tell you, I've known Christians, so-called Christians. Ninajua wa Kristo wale wa dhati. Now, recently I know a, a, a woman, a young young woman, a young, a girl. Najua najua msichana hivi karibuni mdogo hivi. And she is attracted to a guy who serves God in the church. Alikuwa amemtamani kijana anayehudumu katika hekalu. But she later found that this guy has a few girlfriends. Na akagundua kwamba huyu mwanaume alikuwa na wapenzi wa wengine. And this guy might have sex with some of these girls. Na alikuwa na uhusiano wa kimapenzi na hawa wengine au wasichana wengine. And while he is dating this girl, na wakati anapokuwa akichumbiana na hawa wasichana, he asks this girl to go to bed with him. Huwa anauliza kuingia katika hali ya kimapenzi na hao. And when I heard this, I I said to the you know the person who helped this woman, this young woman, this girl. I said we have to let the pastor know about this. The pastor trusted. The pastor trusted this young man. And let him serve God. La akamuelekeza ili aje kutumia mungu. And then girls are attracted by him. Na wale wasichana ba walikuwa me umtamani. And then he has sex with different girls. Wale ba wali alikuwa na usiano wa kujiona. The guy thinks that yo, I I really enjoy this romance. Yeye huwa alikuwa na fikiria ana hisi vizuri akiwa na. But he didn't realize he's offending God. Lakini hakuwa ana tambo ya kwamba alikuwa mkose ya mungu. I said this should not happen in the church. Akasema he I. So I told the woman who helped this girl. Nilia, nika ambia uyo mstena liya saidia uyo mstena. I said, please, you have to tell the pastor. Nika wambia ni viema uwa ambia mchungaji. So she told the pastor. Kwa hivyo haka wambia mchungaji. The pastor talked to this young man. Na mchungaji haka mungelesi ya uyo kidana. And then find out about what happened. Na haka jaribu kutafuta kujua ni nini kilicho tendeka. And the young man was very angry. Na uyo kidana alikuwa mwenye kadabu sana. He said to the girl. Haka ambia uyo mstena. 
I already asked God to forgive me. Niliuliza ana kitambo kumsamaha. The pastor does not have to take care of me. Na pasta afai kunishugulikia. Now listen to this again. Nisikize leo. He said, I already repented to God myself. Alisema nimesha tubu kwa Mungu mimi mwenyewe. For my sex with these girls. Kwa uhusiano wangu na mapenzi na hao wasichana. So no one has to tell the pastor that kuna mtu anayefaa kumwambia pastor kule huko. Because it's my personal relationship. Kwa sababu haya yananihusu mimi na Mungu. I already repented to God. Nilisha tubu mimi na Mungu. So no one has to take care of that. Kwa hivyo hakuna mtu anafaa kuyashughulikia. Let me ask you. Wacha niwaulize. Is this true? Is this right? Is this right? When someone says I have committed adultery with different people, I just pray to God. And I say I'm sorry to God. Then the pastor does not have to handle the truth. Is it true? Is it true? Say it loudly, please. Very good. Because when he has committed adultery with a few girls, and he continues to want to have sex with this girl, that means he is not repentant. Now even if he's repentant, na hata hivyo kama kuna toba, he has hurt a few girls. Amesha kosea watu kadhaa. And then he wanted to continue hurt this new girl. Na anataka kuendelea kuumiza hao wasichana wadogo. So the pastor has to counsel him. Na mchungaji anafaa achukue maelekezo and help him overcome this sin. Na kuelekeza ili aweze kuwa na ushindi wa hiyo dhambi. So he will not hurt more girls. Ili kusiwe na kuumizwa watu wengine zaidi. So the counseling is to help him overcome the sin. Do you understand this? It's not just saying, God, I'm sorry. Now people think, God, I'm sorry. And then continue to say. And they think that they have taken care of the sin. Have they taken care of the sin? They haven't. So, I hope you all understand. When we believe in God's plan, don't fall into sin. And I have to tell you this. The difference between Male and female, what difference? Male wants sex for fun. For enjoyment. Usually, usually, not always. Female wants sex to keep the guy. Wanawake hupeana mili zao ili kuwalinda na kuwa na hao wapenzi wao. So he will marry her. Kwa adili ya kuolewa badai. It's a different intention. Ni hizo ni tumaini ya watu mili tofauti. And many girls think that. Na wasitena wengi wanafikiri ya kuwa. If they have sex with a guy. Wakiusika kwa nyangono na mtu. The guy will marry her. Na mtu atamuwa. Is that true? Ije hiyo ni ukweli vijana. No. No, very good. A loud no. <laughs> you know, when a guy has sex with a girl, very soon he'll see another girl is more pretty. And he'll run after another girl. So if a, a guy come to you, to you girls, say, I like you. I love you. I dream about you. I want to see you. Let's go to bed. Let's choose how much I love you. Do you want to believe him? Do you want to believe him? Do you want to believe him? They just want to use your body. They want to use your body like a prostitute. Do you want to be a prostitute? No. But many girls say, 
it's a shame to be a virgin. Wasichana wengine wanasema kukua fikra ni aibu. If I'm 15 or 18 and I'm still virgin at 5 or 20, like in the Bible, na hisi yeye ana aibu sana. Now, let me ask you, for Christians, should we feel shameful that we are virgins? Je, sisi kama wa Kristo ukifika ukifika umri kama wa miaka 15 na bado wewe ni bikira, unafaa kuaibika? Je, wewe kama Mkristo ukifikisha miaka 16 na wewe bado ni bikira, unafaa kuaibika? We should be proud that we are virgins when we get married. Tofaa tuwe wenye kufurahi ya kwamba sisi ni bikira wakati unaoleka. Now, when someone shows interest to you, mtu akionyesha tamanio ndani yenu, how can we find out if that person is a person is planned by God for you? Je, waweza jiwaje huyo mtu ameletwa na Mungu kwa Write this down. Andika haya chini. Now, for anyone and also for the teachers because the teachers are teaching. Na hata walimu walioko hapa. 